Hello everyone and welcome to the Heart of Scrolls BadgerCast. We are back to bring you guys original Scrolls content for some of the top players in the game today. My name is Colorplants and I am today's host for the show. So this week was pretty big since we, you know, we got Rebellion as the live servers, which I'm sure everyone is pretty happy about. And it's really not a wonder that today's topic is going to be mostly about Rebellion. And to introduce our guest, the first guest we have is probably everyone's favorite Order player. Welcome to Overlord. Hi! <laughs> Hi! Hello! Hi, man. What's up? And as our second guest is Clever US. Clever has been oh. like streaming every day for a while now, and if you follow the Badger channel on Twitch, you might have catched him doing some growth on energy testing with cancer. Welcome to the show, Clever. Hi. <laughs> Hi, man. And our last oh, guest, NRP, who really does not want to give up that top one spot on the ladder. He's even taken up the top six spot on the ladder right, with his, you know, alt account. You know, it's not going to be long before it takes up all ten spots. <laughs> so thank you all for joining the podcast today, and I am very excited to have you all here. And thanks to all of our listeners, to both on Skype, uh, no, both on Twitch and YouTube. And feel free to ask questions on uh, Twitch in the chat, and I'll do my best to address them during the podcast. So, to start off, I just want to you know, ask everyone what they've really been doing since Rebellion came out, what they've been playing, if they've been doing ranked, judgment. So, uh, NRP, I'm going to start with you. What have you been playing since Rebellion came out? I have been playing Mono Energy Range. That's what I've been using in rank so far. Um, you know what, I'm going to just post my uh, deck in the chat here. I'll link my deck. It's just a normal range deck. I'm running something that I've run differently right now, like Potion of Resistance and like Greyback Elders. It's a little different from some of the other players, but it's working well for me so far. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. You should instead test uh, what you are losing with, so Mojang knows what to buff. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good idea. Alright, yeah, clever. But- this week, what have you been up to? So I, I started out doing a lot of judgment, because I haven't had a chance. I, I don't have test server access, so I didn't have a chance to get any of these cards in my hands before. And so I've been uh, playing around trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And then I did a bunch of testing uh, in testing grounds and uh, in games against Cantor, uh, trying to figure out how to run a growth deck post-patch. And I have some, a lot of thoughts on that, and I think I have a deck I'm happy with now. And uh, that means the last couple of days I've started getting back into ranked a little bit with that. And I'll go ahead and post my deck in the chat as well. All right. Uh, and maybe we'll have a chance to talk about it a little later. Lots of decks here. We're just giving them out. <laughs> All right, the Overlord. What have you been up to this last Rebellion week? Going through probably all the emotional phases you can go through. <laughs> uh, but uh, for the most part, I've been playing Order. And... Uh, well, uh, I felt like the the old the old school way you play it just do not work. So I had to find a way to completely play order differently, and it took a long time. But I think I found it a way that works. Ooh. I am really excited to hear more about that later in the podcast. <laughs> Alright, so guys, the big thing everyone was thinking before Rebellion got released was that, you know, energy would be the king for the first time in a really long time, really, because energy has really been on a bow, and people were thinking, like, energy is going to be OP now with power trip and all their crazy stuff, so what I really want to ask you guys, and I'll start with NRP, is, is energy really the best deck right now, or at least one of the best? Has it been buffed so much that it really can't compete with the other ones? Um, I don't think it's OP to say, but it is definitely one of the best decks right now, especially the ranged version of it. I'm not sure if the structure version of it is as up to par as it used to be, because uh, uh, structure and I didn't really get that many uh, fun cards to play with. But the ranged deck, I think right now, is at its best it's going to be, because it's very unpredictable with power trips and you can just make crazy plays with your resources, so it's really hard to play against as another faction because you have no idea what uh, your opponent's going to do. So I think that's where its power lies right now. So when people get a firmer grasp on what energy can actually do in a turn, I think that 
decks like Order and Growth will have an easier time against it, but I think Energy will still be a force to be reckoned with for uh, much longer. Yeah, so even if Energy doesn't like stay in that strongest decks, it will now and probably for some time, you know, be just as good as the other decks at least and be a competitive thing to play. Yeah, I I can uh, kind of add my two cents to that. I I don't think that uh I don't think growth has an edge over energy anymore, or at least not a substantial one from what I've played. Um and maybe that'll I mean obviously pre-patch it felt like energy couldn't beat growth ever. <laughs> but now it's there's a lot of uh there's a lot more things energy can do to really screw you up. And some of the changes uh, were pretty impactful as well in terms of the Crimson nerf, in particular. Yeah. So I think it's it's an even matchup. I, I wouldn't say that like growth or energy has an advantage, from what I've played. I, it seems very even. I would say that the uh, energy is the strongest faction right now, but the uh, the thing is that energy got for the most part one big uh, cold print, and that is power trip, and as long as that is looming around and uh, not. Sh and uh, uh, not change in any way. I, I find it hard to uh, see how strong they are. Uh, it's a uh, when when they have changed it a bit, then I will uh, then we uh, I will make more of a judgment if I find them still being the strongest or not. But uh, that is pretty much caring in them for the most part. But they can definitely, even if it was gone, they can stand on their uh, own very well uh, nowadays. That I agree on. Yeah, because I'm going to have to agree with NRP on this point that people really don't know how to play against energy just yet. I mean, it's just become apparent that energy range is good. Energy range was kind of a thing before, but nobody really ever played it in ranked at all. And people especially don't know how to play against like new cards. Like, you can't you can expect a power trip, but that's a lot of math to add up. Like, what can it do if it gets additional free resources this turn and these cards? So, I think when people get to know the matchup with, you know, all the factions really, decay growth and order, they're gonna be nothing. No one's gonna consider like energy overpowered anymore because they're gonna know just what energy can do. But uh, yeah. It should be. You have played a lot against energy as yes, growth this past uh, few days. Uh, clever. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's like like exactly what you said. There's it's it's hard to know what you are. It's I mean, one of the things that you have to do is get uh, get to terms with the kind of things you can expect on any given turn because that's completely different now. And you have to plot out in your head basically like, or you have to. I think this is like a a kind of a long term thing. Um, where you're going to have to be aware of what the threats are in any given turn. Like with one power trip, with two power trips, uh, I think it's really important to keep track of your opponent's hand size even more than before now, just to think about all the different possible plays they could make. And I, I agree, it's hard to say, like... It, I feel like it's hard to, to know whether energy is actually just too strong, or people just don't know how to play against it yet. And that's the kind of thing where in a couple of weeks after we've... Uh, tried it out for a while. If if people are starting to get the hang of it and it doesn't seem so dominant anymore, then uh, that's one outcome. And then the other outcome is that it's just impossible. Like I, I know the, the Overlord has been under his uh, opinion for a while, and I find it somewhat, uh, you know, there's it's it's not completely unconvincing. The the opinion that Power Trip just produces too many things to play around, so it's impossible to play around all of your opponent's scary moves, whether that's uh, you know the storm runner, machinated bombard, or whatever, or any of the other uh, things that are that are available. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I I haven't felt like I have no chance against energy, except when I play against Cantor. Cantor is just really good, <laughs> so it doesn't yeah. matter what he plays. Um, but I think that I think it's it, like I said. I think it's even from what I from what I can tell. There's still a lot of a lot of danger in in the growth units, and things like Fang Bear have made it easier to pull a scary uh, turn six or turn so. I mean, maybe that's not entirely fair because there there was some really scary stuff you could do with with Rally Crimson or with Mangy Crimson, uh, but 
it still has the tools to deal with it. And I haven't played against energy with any of the other factions except in Judgment, so I don't have a good way to make a call on that. Well, all right then. So, NRP, you've been playing energy and ranked. Have you been facing, like, mostly energy yourself, or has it been a lot against growth, decay, still? Um, after the patch, I think I've been facing all the factions almost equally, but I think I would be facing energy more like 50% of the time, and the other three fac the other two factions, um, or three factions, uh, the other 50% of the time. Um, I... I like facing energy because, um, not to sound like weird or anything, but I think I am a in a mono. Uh, or I mean, in a mirror match, I think I can usually defeat the other opponent. So that's why I'd ra I'd like facing energy. The deck that gives me problems would probably be decay. Um, I know structure energy is known for uh, being good against decay, but range energy feels like decay might be one of the only decks that can take it down because it, there's all those little like low health creatures are easily destroyed by soul steals and stuff like that so I do have some problems against them but definitely um, I think the amount of energy players you see in ranked is going to go down but it's still going to be a very strong deck yeah but if like the meta becomes energy just versus energy all the time in the top rankings what do you think like the key cards are going to be to win against an energy mirror? Because I've seen people discussing match chat like Ash Runner over Dust Runner and Tempest Runner, Ironclad Reaver over like uh, what is it? Grey Grey Lock Elder. Yeah. Like if you had to do an energy mirror match, which of cards would you choose that would help especially in that? Um, I'm maybe asking a little hard right now. <laughs> well. You definitely want to draw your cards like Bombard at the right time because I think that's the most important card in a mono energy range deck because when you have that card, only three resources, you can make so many things happen. Um, cards like Mash Nugget are also really important to get at the right time in a uh, mirror match against energy it's because you want to have those ready for your Cannonettas and your Storm Runners and even your uh, Theas. Um, other cards that could be useful are like, I think even though there's Sudden Eruption now, um, both Sudden Eruption and Thunder Surge are nice against energy because energy has some structures, so it's hard for them to really have optimal placement on the board, so a lot of times you can catch them off guard with a nice well-placed Thunder Surge and stuff, so I think yeah, just general removal is good to have like at the right time, so those will all be cards that are very important in energy mirror matches in the future, I think. Alright then, so that's what to look out for if the meta becomes just energy versus energy all the time. <laughs> In which case, but, I will kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I personally can live with that. That is not the most horrible mirror I can think about. Yeah, that's I, I, I mean, I, I think energy versus energy and decay versus decay are some of the best mirrors. But I order loses to energy. I, who, who beat you yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, one game. I think and how many times have we faced each other? Oh. Anyway, back to top. <laughs> Shots fired. I mean, I've I have a feeling that if it was, if it were to become energy versus energy all the time, Mojang would probably change something. So I don't yeah. think that's a future we have to worry about too much. I have faith in their ability to bring the nerf hammer. Well, it used to be decay versus decay all the time, and they did do some nerfs to Harvester and Mature's Nature, and then we saw it be all the time growth versus growth. So I think it's actually really hard balancing to try to make all the factions be played equally. It always seems like there's like one faction that's on top, and I think Mojang will continue to try to prevent that and try to make all the factions good, and I think that's just going to be a normal thing, a cycle in the game. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I uh, agree. Suggestion that was actually considered, uh, not considered by the devs, but like a lot of people in our guild I know were uh, suggesting that was bombarded up to four cost because that was really like the thing that made energy range really good. That would, when you could like power trip into a bombard and let down like an extra creature to bombard with, that was really the place that got uh, energy, you know, the edge in most games. Like, do you think bombard could actually like deserve a nerf? Because that's a card that had been in the game from the start, really. And 
do you really think that we got enough cards this patch to make a you know card that was considered like great before overpowered now clever i definitely <laughs> think they're gonna have to nerf it at some point at some point there's just gonna be so many good ranged creatures that that's not even a drawback that you have to pick ranged creatures uh and then it'll just be a three cost rallying at that point and at that point they'll have to they'll just have to they'll have to change it but i don't know whether that point is now i mean i i think it makes a lot of sense to change bombard over changing power trip i like that solution which is uh, i think the discussion you're referencing we we were talking about how to how to nerf power trip and we wound up deciding maybe it would be better better if you just nerfed bombard because that cuts yeah. into a lot of the things you can do and i i still like that as a solution but like we said earlier, I kind of want to see how the metagame settles out before we. Uh, and I think Mojang shares that opinion that we don't want to. You don't want to start nerfing things too quick until you see how whether the players are able to come up with ways around it and stuff. Yeah. And you ask the uh, if uh, uh, so many stuff has been added in this rebellion that it has become overpowered. Um. I'm not sure if it has become a power, but yes, a lot of scary stuff has been added. I, on top of my head, there's two more piercing, uh, so it's not just Kanata, we have Fee and Ash Runner now. And then we have, um, uh, what is his name, that one armor guy that looks like Steampunk. Uh, Tempest Reaver. Yeah, Tempest Reaver, I, I, him, yeah. him you can also utilize, uh, and uh, he can be very scary in it. There's uh, There's a lot of threats now. It's not just Cannonet and Storm Runner anymore. It's it's more than those two, so to speak. So yeah. yes, it has become more scary with the bombard. Uh, something Blubberbub is actually saying in chat is that the idea behind ranged units is that they do, they cost more, so you pay some part to rally with a unit of the spell. I'm probably guessing that it means like the energy ranged creatures are pretty fragile and their stats aren't really good for like their cost. So making them attack more frequently is going to cost you less because of that. Do you think this is a good thing at all? Well, uh, yeah. or even yes, for my response to it, yes, they are fragile, uh, except for that. Um, uh, I I even forgot now armor guy. <laughs> Tempest <laughs> Reaver. <laughs> Tempest friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> write it down in the sky. Uh, ex except for him, yes, they are all fragile, but they ju but they just need to shoot once, and uh, you will get value, and uh, you you can do that quite uh, uh, quite easily with a power trip. So that is not a big issue, if you ask me. But yeah. uh, I, I'm not the expert here. Let let's see uh, what NRP's answer is to that, because I think he has mo most insight how the whole fragile uh, units. Uh, dynamic is um well ah, i kind of missed the question it was like some of like the low health units of energy can you repeat that so the yeah, question like okay is... thanks for the contribution now back, <laughs> to, <laughs> back to i disagree no, like the, the question no. is like is it is the the, the 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 bombard cost less but the energy units the range units themselves cost more because they're ranged so doesn't that even out and in my opinion, I feel like some of these units are perfectly good, like for their cost. Even if you take range out of the equation, like hired smuggler is a two-two for two that has a pretty sick value. And the fact that it's ranged, like if you took away the ranged and added something else, I don't know what you like. You could give it one more point of health, maybe. I don't know how much of a difference it would make. I think a lot of these cards are very efficient and happen to be ranged. But maybe Give them a reload. They need to reload. <laughs> hey, turn. They cannot shoot twice in a row because they need to reload first. <laughs> but it's it's kind of the same thing like with the case units because some of the case units are like a little bit too great stats for their cost, but because they don't have any like counter manipulation at all in their deck, that kind of makes up for it because you. They're real predictable as you they can't really attack when you don't predict it because they don't have any you know countdown decrease. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. So 
I still like to hear NRP's opinion about it. He's the big energy player among us, I would say. Um, well, I, first of all, I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself a big energy player. I just I like to Aaron play whatever. calls me big order player. Well, that's because you I, play I, order all the you time. You only play order. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a growth big. player at heart. He's a growth player. At nah, heart, I think I think I'm actually mostly like orderish decay, but but let's not get into that discussion right now. But um. <laughs> Um, so Bombard and the range creatures, well, yeah, the range creatures tend to be, like, one extra cost, uh, for how good the creature is. Like, for example, Gun Automaton is a 2-2-3 two, two, for two costs, and it's ranged. That, like, is it, like, you can compare that to a Ripper, which is one less cost, and they're all, I mean, the one extra health, uh, that does help. But cards like that... The range just gives it synergy with Bombard, and I think synergy with Bombard is really good because that just makes it like, um, like a rallying, and that there's so many range creatures in energy decks. I think that even though most of the creatures uh, in the energy decks are pretty low cost, you can just throw down with Bombards. I think it would still be wise to nerf something like Bombard because um, you can still like do. I think it's a little too cheap to make some plays like like Stormrunner, Bombard, Machinated. That's like 7 attack and 4 hexes, which I think is only for 8 cost. And I think you can too easily, with now the power drips and everything, be able to go like Thea Bombard, which would like wipe a row. And so rather than nerfing the units, I think a nice, a nice way to just nerf energy is with making Bombard 4 or 5 cost, maybe not 5 cost, I'll start with 4 cost, but right now, I'm not sure if they should do it just yet, see how the meta, meta settles out first. The other thing is that Bombard currently affects units on both sides, right? Yeah. Yes. I think like you could make kind of a compromise, take that, that away, just say your units with ranged, and make it cost 4, and maybe that would be like kind of a halfway point. It's not, it's not, it's not as hard to nerf. If if you do that, because there are a lot of like decay has some good range creatures now. Um, yeah, that's an interesting on, idea. Oh, oh, like honestly, uh, yes, decay has some some and such, but I do not once again play much of energy. But I I have this uh, feeling that if they remove that, the, the opponent get the uh, the count on decrease as well and the increase the uh, uh, increase. Uh, the cost by one, they will probably see it. They will probably see it, it more as a nerf than a buff. So yeah, I mean, I definitely, I definitely it, think of it as a nerf, just maybe not as hard a nerf as simply making it four cost. Because then, if if you if you make it four cost and it only affects your side, it's just a rally that only affects range units, and because it only affects range units, you cut the cost by one. Whereas if, if you left that other effect on. Uh, yeah, because uh, except for mirror, what exactly is scary? It would be like the witch doctor, but uh, there's not that many other scary stuff. If you ask me, witch doctor, oblivion seeker, curse monger. The oblivion uh, seeker will do two damage. I, 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 I'm hoping you are not having your can, uh, even canonetta as like free, right? Uh, I hope you don't have your scatter gunner in the front line, because you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared of those That's oblivion like seekers, man. <laughs> I think the curse monger point is really is really key though, because a couple extra yeah. curses here and there. Can that that is true. Curse monger would be something you do not want to haste. So okay, I I give two there. Baleful the witch case. is ranged now, probably decay staple. Yeah, point. but, but <laughs> another unit that can tickle you. <laughs> <laughs> Kill my scatter gunner in my front line. It's like I would I, I would agree that crossbowman would be scary, but no one really runs crossbowman. <laughs> Gotta run crossbowman uh, to counter the energy. That, that is the counter that's the energy. Literate, that's the answer. Now, that's now, literally now the answer. We, we now figured they it out. They use bombard, or they will trigger my crossbowman. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've literally we've just fixed it. We've we've yeah. fixed we've fixed energy versus order. You're welcome. You helped. <laughs> If it's like clever and me, it's talking most uh, with energy here when uh, the big <laughs> energy player is for most part silent. I'm okay no, with I it. Think, 
Nerp has <laughs> dropped. Nerp has dropped some serious knowledge bombs, man. I really, I feel like I've, I feel like he's made some sizable contributions here. Thank you, clever. You're welcome, All right. dog. We Americans, we gotta stick together. Yep. <laughs> that- hey, guys, I'm not gonna get international here. I mean, it's like Scandinavia, <laughs> with me and the double R versus America versus you guys. Hey. So we were talking. Where you're from? Are you in, you're in Norway? Uh, whatever. That's I'm Norwegian, man. Here. No, that's not. Yeah. It's not at all. <laughs> all right. So we were talking about decay, right? Decay has gotten not a lot of interesting stuff at all, really. This patch. Or- it yeah. has. It has. I mean, I've. I thought it was gonna like just run Baleful and Bloodline Taint, and after like the games I have been doing on rank, that seems to actually be the case, that people just been running, you know, Baleful Witch and Bloodline Taint. Seen some Blight Seeds in some games, but Decay, do you think, like, Decay can stay in the top now, still, after, like, the Necrogeddon nerf, and that it didn't get enough good stuff, as the other factions might have gotten? I still have personally. <laughs> I, I definitely think so. I mean, I, I think that Decay just has such strong core units. Uh, and the fact that, it, like NERP was saying, NRP was saying, I want to say NERP. I'm just going to say NERP from now it on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm just going to stick with that. We, it seem, it seems like they do all right against energy, which is going to be helpful. And I think they've always been pretty decent against growth. Um, but outside of just the general broad things, um, I think. The deck that seems interesting to me is like I don't know. Maybe this is all. This is extremely anecdotal, but Cantor beat me the other day with an undead deck that was running Corpus Collector. Uh, <laughs> not the Corpus Collector is the reason it worked, but it's just like one more thing that has the potential to contribute to that uh, that undead theme. And then with the Nurus as well, you can get your husks that she makes swinging for like seven with the Restless Bones, along with whatever else you have that you can trigger. So I think there's there's some room for development on that front potentially. I don't know if anybody else has opinions on on dead decks, but literally dead decks, as in <laughs> undead. <laughs> but yeah, NRP, you played. I think you played mostly decay before you played growth, and now energy. Would you consider even going back to either growth or decay, if that? Um, yeah, I think Decay is still strong. They got Nuru, which I think is probably the best champion by a little bit. Um, so the nerf to Necrogeddon isn't that bad because you're going to higher resources anyways now to get the Nuru out. I mean, it still hurts the Necrogeddon nerf to be able to go, like, Ripper Necrogeddon and Watcher Necrogeddon, which is the reason why most Decay players I see uh, have taken out Watcher out of the deck, including me. So... I do think Decay is still really strong. Ever since it came out, um, back in like August or September, it's been a force on the ladder. So, um, I wouldn't mind going back to playing ranked if I uh, if I wanted to. I think it could still hold its own. And yeah, I guess it's all to say. Yeah, I mean, I mean talking about go on double load. Yeah, I, I I'm really on this here. Actually, I think that. Um, I was expecting Decay to... I didn't exactly know where they would be placed. I would. I was expecting like a third place in my... where I would put them. But they could contest for the second place. But uh, honestly, I, I'm, I'm pretty... I, I feel uh, very much that they are a third placer. And uh, if my order deck it keeps on doing as well as it uh, will, I, I would actually put it as a fourth place. So that is a huge drop in my list where it has come from. It's definitely competitive though. It's not yeah. bad. They, they, they can definitely is... keep on competing, but uh, they they actually has become, they are, they are not dominating any other faction anymore, I feel, which is why they are getting so low. I mean, it seems to me like part of the reason that is even possible, it's possible for Decay to fall so far, it's just because it's all kind of closed in a little bit. Like, it used to be energy was way down here. At least that was my impression. I never saw an energy player on the ladder. And yep. now energy is yeah. like up they there, switch, switch. growth's up here, maybe <laughs> Decay's slightly less, and it's like, it's all very close. And, uh, I don't know. So, s- dropping a couple spots 
mm-hmm. when it's like that. I mean, and then like I don't know. I don't think you can definitively write off one faction or another in this in the current meta because it seems like a lot still has to settle. No, nope. yeah. they can all compete at the moment. Although yeah. I still feel energy is. Well, we talked about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I want to move uh, on to another topic right now. I want to talk about Judgment, which also had a pretty big change this patch. Uh, they introduced Rarity Rows, which basically makes it so that every row is a uh, Rarity in its own. So you have a Rare Row, you have Uncommon Rows and Uncommon Rows. So everybody's going to have just about the same Rarity distribution in their decks. And, you know, after doing some testing on, like, the test server before it came out, it just seemed like a cool idea and it seemed like it fixed stuff and made things better. But after it has actually come out, it seems like... I mean, some people have even said that Judgment feels almost like constructed now because people can make so good decks. As in... Yeah, I mean, I have not played a lot of Judgment scenes myself, but I'm clever, you have played some Judgment. What do you think about this? Yeah, I'm definitely not the only one who's noticed this, but it's a lot easier to make a monocolor deck. And uh, I don't know why exactly that is. I guess because you can rely more or less on getting certain key cards from the faction you want to play. Or ma- uh, I, c- I feel like what happened in the old Judgment is your first like 10 picks, you were just like, oh, there's an important rare, and there's an important rare, and there's an important rare. And here are some good cards from the other from from the various factions. And then you just looked at what you had there, and you tried to figure out what was going to be your primary color, and then you just kept kind of like filtering through. But when you have those guaranteed rows of rares, you don't get like a Necrogeddon and a Great Wolf and a uh, a speed. You have to choose between the Necrogeddon, the Great Wolf, and the speed in in one row, and that kind of really drives you in a narrower path towards one resource. And if you try to do a multi-resource deck, you kind of get, like, the one, the ones I've tried, my first couple of decks were really god-awful because I was doing it kind of the way you used to, just, like, picking the best card in each row. And I wound up with, like, you know, one of those 16 growth and 14 decay decks, and it just it was god-awful, god-awful. But that kind of thing used to work in Judgment. It doesn't anymore. Um, and maybe that's also just because there's a little bit less room for error depending on who you happen to run into. But after two losses, you're just out. Yeah, but, like, the important question about that is, is it more fun now that the decks are more, like, constructed, or is it less fun because you have less, like, crazy combos and bad decks that you just have to see if you do good with? Like, NRP, I know you've been playing some Judgment as well. Do you think it's less or more fun now? Um, it's a tough call. Uh, I don't want to say it, but I think I'd have to go with a little less fun now because it just seems like all the decks I've been facing are just really strong, and my deck is really strong. It feels close to constructed because we both have like mono decks with all these rare cards. Um, so there are still some cool, crazy plays that you're not expecting, but I feel like the amount of those things, uh, the amount of times those things happen now, is greatly decreased from the old judgment. But along with uh, the stronger decks uh, in Judgment now, you ha- you can still lose one match and get the five wins. So I think that kind of makes up for that by having to face harder opponents. You're I'm like allowed to lose one game but still win the five. So um, but Judgment's still a ton of fun. But as you could probably guess, my most fun lies in ranks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to make uh, yeah. my own short comment on this because I never play Judgment, really, is that, uh, from my impression, they made uh, Judgment more reliable, so you can uh, uh, make so, uh, more, uh, so you can ba- make uh, good decks more reliably, but uh, the trade-off was that it lost uh, some of uh, the Judgment flavor in it, and uh, was that uh, trade-off uh, worth paying? I, I, I don't know, I don't play, but that is the impression I got from it. Yeah, it's weird because people were complaining like judgment is too random, and now they're really complaining like judgment is too constructed. It's Look, we I have two blocks here. Me. We have these guys. They always, they always complain <laughs> when it's and when they are not satisfied. And these guys, they shut up because they are satisfied. Then these are satisfied. Then they shut up and these start to complain. 
and it will always be complaining all the bloody time. That's just how it works. I I have a suggestion though. I just think they should. Uh, I think a middle ground way to go would be to have like the old format, where it was kind of like a crazy. Uh, I wanted to say a word, but it was a very bad word, so I didn't say it. <laughs> um, and anyway, the point is that I think that should extend just slightly longer. Like maybe you get sixty picks. And then you pick 30 cards instead of 45 picks, or maybe like 55 or something. And that would make it a little bit easier to not have... Because like the old decks, sometimes you j just have like a god-awful, terrible one. And the new decks, you just like are guaranteed something that's at least like mid-range, and then it just kind of loses against everybody who got a good deck. And I think if, if they stuck with the old one, there'd still be room for variety, but you'd have a little bit of a better chance of getting up to that certain number of, of cards you need to really make a strong uh, a strong deck. I don't know, maybe that's not a... I'm sure there would still be people who complain. Maybe, well, they, maybe I, instead of the... It would be like this group. A change that I think would also be cool, like I like your idea, Clever, but instead of making it like 60 picks to choose 30, maybe um, they can go back to the old system where it's not like the... like. The rares, commons, uncommon, so it's a little bit more judgment y, like nice and random. But maybe you can like see five rows or six rows instead of four, so you can better tell what deck you're going to have. So you won't be making those like, like you were saying before, Clever, like in the early rounds of the old judgment, you would just take like as soon as you saw a good card, whatever faction it was, you just take it and hope maybe it could be worked into the deck later. If it's like you can ha see six rows at a time then you can better plan out what you're going to do and it's going to make i think that would kind of make up for the less um less luck with the rares problem i agree with that a lot actually i think that's a great idea oh i thought of a way to explain what is kind of sort of maybe wrong with the current system which is that you can go in with a certain faction in mind that you want to play and you can just play that faction like i uh, maybe this is just because i've been doing it with energy but i just want to like get all the energy cards cuz i don't have them uh, so I just go in and I just pick energy cards straight from the start. I ignore everything else, and it's worked. I've gotten like four and one and five and zero oh and all this stuff, and it's just like I don't even try to make a decision ever. I just pick the energy card on each row. So maybe that's also a tirade about energy balance, but I don't know. And I'm Too feeling good in that uh, I'm feeling that uh, judgment. The system itself is quite okay. The, the main problem in my eyes is that scrolls uh, are not really designed well for drafting. Uh, it's like people love drafting, therefore they, they want it. And I suppose Mojang was all, always planning on implanting it, but it will take time before we can make it really work well. Because the way every other card game I know of, I don't know all of them, but uh, of those I know, you can always uh, somehow make uh, make uh, cards work well together, even if they are not in the same color or such. Uh, scrolls uh, do not really work that well in that case. You need specific cards to make uh, uh, different colors work well together. And uh, because of that alone, the whole draft thing falls it becomes hard to make it work well, so that uh, that I think is the main issue, not the not the judgment uh, in in of itself. That is actually quite fine what they have done, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. So before we move on, we move on to our last segment of today. I want to talk to you, Double Lord, about your new order deck because we haven't talked a lot about order during this last patch, because Order got some of the most poor cards, really, and people, I, I personally thought that people were just gonna, like, put in K and Wings Water and have the standard late-game Order, but as I've seen with you, that has not been working at all against Energy, so you have just revamped your deck altogether and put out Imperials and put in Powerbound, actually, which I've seen been quite popular. I saw Sark running it in stream today as well. So why is Powerbound suddenly popular? I'm confused. Well, I'm I I I'm not sure if I can give myself the whole credit to that, but it feels like me and Devin were the ones to really start to use it first, 
uh, and perhaps I were more vocal in the forums about it. I, w- I would say he, he and me were on the same path at the same time. We, we have done different things. Powerbound, the thing about Powerbound is that Imperial is good. Everyone knows it, uh, why it's good. But uh, you do, first of all, you cannot use it at a- any point of time. Literally, you need seven resources for it. You cannot just use it. Uh, and then you skip a turn when you use it. So it's more of a get more ahead card. It won't. It won't give you a comeback. It won't. Um, uh, it won't finish anything or uh, such. It just if you are ahead, get more ahead. If you are even, get behind. If you use it, basically. So what power bond offers it doesn't offer the same amount of value, but it's still good value and much more flexible. You can use it at any point of time because it's one uh, cost. And it has the condition that it needs to be killed to give uh, that uh, extra resource, yes. Uh, But the trade-off is that one, either your unit is left alive and you use it on something like a vanguard or general or wings captain, which you are totally fine if they just leave it alone uh, because you want it alive. You're expecting it to die normally. Uh, and um, if you get that one uh, resource, then what does it actually mean? How do you otherwise get one resource? You use it by sacrificing. This means instead of sacrificing for more resources, you you keep on sacrificing for scrolls. So in a sense, it is a heritage for one cost, which uh, would be strong, I think everyone would believe. So uh, by that logic, you can see why it is good. Then uh, by practical, it's simply working for me. But I'm going to be honest, I, I'm not entirely convinced by it. I think you could run by simply having even more card draw and not use it and go the classic, you ramp yourself and then just put in even more card draw. But uh, it is good. And it's working. It's good. So, Dora just can't go the normal late game they used to right now because I mean, energy range actually used to be quite good against order before even the patch that used to be like their best matchup because I played energy ranged in ranked like a couple of months ago, maybe more than that, a lot of months ago probably, but uh, it was still good then, so continue. Well, I feel um, uh, you will reach late game at some point, so yes, you can go to late game, but you will reach it. And uh, you can play Imperial, it is possible, it's just that you cannot depend yourself on Imperial. If you depend yourself on the Imperial, you will lose. That is my experience. You have to depend yourself on something else. The Imperial just is a bonus. Like, uh, I, I see probably how many see on K. K is a bonus. If you get her out and can utilize her, that mm-hmm. is great. But uh, you're not really uh, having the mind. I don't think anyone really had the mindset that I'm going to put the K out now, so now I, uh, it's, I'm, I, I'm, I'm unstoppable. I will win. No, not really. Uh, but she's a good bonus. And it's uh, how Imperial is now, in my opinion. It's, if you can put it in, and I want it in somehow, then that is great. It's, again, a get further ahead card. All right. Clever, your opinion on order on the ladder right now. I haven't you seen haven't... order on the ladder. <laughs> I, I only I only came back to the ladder pretty recently, and before that I was playing testing grounds where everybody was trying out their various energy decks and uh, playing with Cantor, and he hasn't played any order against me. So I honestly, I don't know. I do think that uh, this is one thing I wanted to bring up against growth, which is that there are certain like thresholds of damage which are now harder or different to obtain, if that makes sense. And yeah. so the, chi- the one I'm really thinking about chiefly is hitting five damage, uh, which is the wing shield, like, I don't know what that, what, what, what's a good word for it, like this, this, the, the point at which you can kill a wing shield is when you have yeah. five damage you can bring to bear on it. And so one thing that used to be really strong is you just, you put down a veteran, and then you put down a crimson bolt. Veteran, crimson bolt, whatever you have in the back, is going to attack the veteran kills the wing shield, and then you wipe their whole roll. But now you can't do that 
as easily anymore. It's not a seven mana play, it's an eight mana play. Um, and so getting to that five damage point means you have to, just with just uh, anything else that has three attack, there's other things that have three attack, but I think it, it comes down to like getting enchantments on your fang bear now, stuff like that is, is the new way to get five damage together. So I, I haven't played the matchup yet, but I think that it's uh, probably a bit different the way it plays out. Yeah, I mean, talking about enchantments on your fang bear, you run earth for mystic in your deck, right? Yeah, I think yeah. just about every growth player does run Earthborn Mystic, and it seems like yeah. there's a lot of disagreement on what enchantments to run with that. So some people are of the unground school of thought, and unground's pretty cool because you can basically stay on the opposite side of the board from your opponent and not have to go to them and just put unground on their stuff and, and kill it and kill their idols. Um, I tried that. I don't think I actually like it that much. It kind of wastes the the Mystic's uh, plus one damage thing. So like that that portion of her value. Uh, and so then the other two schools of thought seem to be Stagheart or Verdant Veil. And Stagheart is good for... I, I, here, a good way to think about it uh, is that Stagheart is like better on a Brave and Verdant Veil is better on a Vengeful Vader. I'm currently running both of them. And the reason is that <laughs> the reason is that uh, I was looking for seven mana plays that would be that would replace the old ones. So Crimson Rally is out. Crimson Veteran is out. Uh, and so, what are, what are other things you can play with a rally uh, on when you're at seven mana? And I think that's a really important resource value for growth because it's how you get to God Hand. You have to have a seven mana turn before you have your eight mana turn. And uh, uh, so far, it seems decent. It seems decent. <laughs> I'm not sure. It might be too many enchantments to run both. Uh, I think I I, I kind of want Verdant Veil because it's quite good against energy, I believe. Uh, but I also kind of want Stagheart because it's some guaranteed. It's a guaranteed damage trick for two. Uh, and so, in certain cases, it's like the 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 new. It's my approximation of Crimson Bowl for certain situations. Yeah, well, I know at least Cantor doesn't agree with you about running two enchantments because it's all yeah. about the idea of you know, knowing what enchantment you're going to draw so you can plan your turn after what enchantment you're drawing. It's true, uh, but the only time that it comes... Yeah, so that does that, 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 that is a, that's a very strong argument for only running one or the other. Um, and I kind of wound up running two because I was having trouble figuring out what else to put in the various slots. Um... I, I know some people run Eye of Eagle, some people run Frost Scale. I don't really want to run either of those cards. And so at that point, I was looking, for, yeah, it, it kind of traced back from trying to figure out what to combo with uh, with Rallying. And then trying to keep the Verdant Veil in there just because it's it can be super efficient in a lot of cases. Yeah. I think that's, I think Verdant Veil is an amazing card. So do I. Uh, as I will uh, go back to uh, the order topic, uh, so uh, I as wish to sort of give a, a bit more input in how I'm feeling about it is that you you have to, in my opinion, contest. It, it, it reminds about uh, a lot about how tempo order was that you have to contest the board early. So what I also do is I run. I do not run Ducal Infantryman and I run Wing Soldier instead uh, with the uh, Wings Warder. Simply because if both of my two drops do not deal much damage or any damage at all, it will hurt me. Uh, so the Wing Soldier actually helps a lot. And the Wings Warder, she's, she's no longer as essential because it's not as defensive oriented. But she is really good because I, I don't think many really think about that. If you have a wings rewarder that's protecting the, your row, except for energy, who who can uh, power trip and do some nasty combo and swipe everything, uh, there is uh, there is no one really who can remove uh, what you have there uh, just like that. Uh, there is a uh, very few exception, like I uh, on ground with. Uh, 
god hand on the idols that that can remove like your, your general whatever you're protecting mm -hmm. but uh, beside it it cannot be removed so it's really good if you have something so what I often do with Wings Warder mm -hmm. is that I switch her with the lanes so what will attack this turn she moves away and what will attack uh, next turn I protect mm -hmm. because they can then not be removed uh, so they will get to attack next turn, and uh, and that is how I pretty much play her out. Um, against Grove, mm. she's uh, she's a moving obelisk, which is actually quite fine. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. When moving I see Wings Warder, I'm like, that thing is not gonna attack me as Grove. I I, I I I have a really hard time believing that Wings Warder is good in that matchup because uh, it, well, it just she, doesn't. She ain't really good in that matchup, but you can use her as a protection. Like, if I put my uh, Wing Soldier out, and uh, then I put a Wing Warder in front of her, you you won't kill my Wing Soldier before he will attack you. Uh, she, she is quite good at blocking in, in those scenarios. She's a useless contraption that can move. Really. <laughs> Yeah. In that matchup, she might be. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know. What spell is Grove gonna play on you as order? Well, if if I understand it right, it might be the case, but uh, I think that is some kind of bug <laughs> yes, with the reversal that Rumble do not work if Wings Warder uh, is in that row. It should work. But the uh, reversal is not uh, working. Uh, I still need to report that bug because reverse reversal is targeting the row. It's not targeting the unit. It should be able to work on things like Wings Warden and Verdant Whale because they can just not be targeted. They can still be rumbled and whatever more. It's not like you use a thunder search and it says I take no damage because spell do not they work on me. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> you can still be affected by spells. You can just not be targeted. Anyway, I will not ramble about that. All right, guys, we should probably move on to our last topic. Also, welcome back, NRP. I hope you enjoyed your little trip. Yeah. To the back of the room. How All right, comfortable so is that chair? Is it is it super comfortable? Eh, it's okay. I usually sit in that, like when I'm playing on like uh, consoles over the TV. Wait, did you guys mention that I did that because it's people saying in the chat? Well, no, I think Chad noticed himself. Yeah, I mean, this is on YouTube. <laughs> it looks kind of weird, like for me to just get up and sit up there. <laughs> That's well, we, gonna be great. Yeah, <laughs> I like. So, how yeah, I did that because there were many all. requests in the chat yeah, to go oh, sit in yeah. that chair for a second. <laughs> well, you know, get up, please, the viewers. All right, so. Our last minutes of the podcast, we will be talking about something we actually have not talked about, I think. That is lore about scrolls. And the reason that is, is because uh, Mojang just released a scrolls map on scrolls.com right now, which is basically a map of the world of scrolls, which I find really exciting. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of a lore guy. I read all flavor texts. I, like, look at art for hours just to find secrets and stuff, and... Uh, I thought we could discuss it a little bit. I don't know how interested you guys are in like the lore and stuff, but I think it looks well, really interesting. I do not have a long comment on it, so I will make my short comments on it. First of all, I find it funny that energy is avoiding growth in that map. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, sec uh, secondly, I actually, i be honest, I, I, I like they release a map. But I was a little bit disappointed because it's it's like a big island, and then we have we have or order in uh, in the bottom, and then the other three uh, at the top. There, it's like, well, this is very generic. <laughs> it's not it's not really that flavorful. It's not. I I was hoping a bit like we have order in the middle of the country, and then we ha have a bit. Uh, maybe energy is some kind of tribesman that is a bit all over the place and growth is for the most part in the forest areas and then we have uh, a, a quite a specific area that the K rest uh, on that is like their whole uh, holdings uh, you know that uh, that uh, far away 
land that uh, people do not want to travel to or something like that. No, we have, we have four. See, I feel like you just described the map from the Elder Scrolls Oblivion with like the <laughs> city in the middle. <laughs> like, well, the last uh, thing we want is to like get another lawsuit out of those guys. <laughs> uh. I'm not sure about that. It's not. Uh, I, one could say it feels like you uh, described the map from I don't know Game of Thrones, whatever. There's a lot of bloody maps. That no, are, I mean, uh, though, I mean, they always put these like fantasy maps on a peninsula. What's up with that? It's it looks no it looks kind of like a it's like flipped around Lord of the Rings. Wait, yeah, so, I'm, wait yeah, I don't really I'm understand. Up. Like, so. We can confirm. Uh, we all know that Ilmire has to be decay, but how do we know that the other three are, like, whatever you I mean, said? I, uh, I, I saw. Uh, I saw it confirmed somewhere. I I don't remember where, but it. I mean, uh, right, Duro so. has been in some flavor text and energy, I think. Yeah. And Kyle, yeah, I mean, they have Vile Oak. I'm just. I'm just guessing that North Peaks Frostbear is hanging up in those frosty mountains. I mean, it's it, it like, just. Seems natural to me. Yeah, I guess so. That's how it's it just a, a land of frost beards. There's like <laughs> thousands of them. They all look exactly the same. Like even the what women I, are frost beards. <laughs> <laughs> what I have been uh, thinking, and that is one of those things I wanted to see more, is that I'm I'm curious if Stormbreak Peninsula is a actually growth holding and uh, not a uh, order holding. But that that one I don't know. But if it's like Stormbreak, it, that sounds uh, more growth than. I, th- I think it sounds like some sort of prison or something, like Azkaban. Like that's where they keep the really bad guys. Yeah, that's where Order keeps their prisoners of war. Hey. hey, hey. Yeah. I thought it was just a Stormrunners thing. Like maybe that was where the Stormrunners hung out. Stormrunners. Wait, well, since it's Stormbreak. So they're taking a break at Stormbreak. Who names a place Drifting Sea? Like, uh, what is it drifting away? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> you know, like, it know. drifts back and forth. Look, like, can't ask you all these questions. <laughs> do not see. Every time I put my damn boat, it just drifts away. <laughs> I don't get it. It looks I like, like that just leads to nowhere. Drifting sea leads to nowhere. So I guess they're going to put like campaign missions on this, and I can tell you right now it's going to be the mission on Reason's End. It's going to be a mission where they just like, there's like memorials, and the new player is like, what, what are these memorials going to do? And then suddenly everything explodes because End of Reason gets played. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the, looks what like those little like, castles are going to be like uh, campaign things. And the, the like, like the overworld was saying. It, the map itself looks kind of generic, but it's actually just the fact that there is a map is just so exciting, and all like these words on it, like um, it says on the top right, "Age of War Year 60." So uh, you can interpret that however you want. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty awesome campaign they're working on, and they'll have like cool, like like probably campaign missions in those weird islands and decay and the Sea of Curses. So I am just really excited for this. Yeah. yeah, and since but it I says know. year 60, that would provide the information that either the land would change or that, like, maybe the Ilmire took over some things in the Dura place, like, overcomes count. I don't know, that, may, that it might change over the count of the campaign. I don't think this has too much to do with the campaign, though. I think Dragonine Mons also confirmed that this is not really that campaign related in IRC. But I just wanted to release something that they're basing their lore, lore off in flavor text internally. Well, it's also, dope. yeah, I like it. I just like looking at it. I like that it exists. <laughs> also, another thing is that to celebrate the release, the release of Rebellion, here's the map, and soon words as narrated by everyone's favorite historian, Sign of Dira, Dira. So that means maybe more lore stuff coming pretty soon. Seems like it. Huh. I don't know what words is, if that's like a literature, Roman, I have no idea what that's gonna be, but it's more uh, more lore, so I'm happy about it. What I'm mostly curious about is the whole summoner thing. Like, are the summoners, do they summon 
so to speak, tokens that is fighting for them, or are these uh, real units that is summoned from a distant place to the battlefield, so to speak? That is what I'm more curious about when it comes to the lore. It's interesting because the trials make it out to be kind of like a mixture of both. Like, some of them are like, some dude challenges you to a collar off or whatever, and then the other ones are like, your forces are on top of the hill and their forces are on the bottom of the hill, and so beat the fuck yeah. out of them. And, uh... <laughs> so I feel like it's... They, they haven't quite made up their minds about it, maybe. Yeah. I think, like, the basic theory is that this is, like, the world, and the callers are, like, really powerful wizards that have the power to, like, capture these creatures in this world and use them to fight against each other. Basically, I think that was what Bummy Boy was suggesting in IRC that one time when he was just blabbling about lore and people were crazy about it. So, I'm, I, I don't think they figured it out just yet themselves either, but hopefully we can paint one day. <laughs> one day. Alright, guys, that just about sums up the podcast for today. Uh,. So, any final thoughts about, like, the rank ladder right now? Is energy still going to be up there? I mean, do you think people are going to figure out decks by now? Because right now, every energy deck I see is a little bit different. Every growth deck I see is running some different enchantments. And that was not the case before the thing. So, NRP, do you think the meta is going to settle anytime soon? Or is it going to be crazy for quite a while? Um, like all the big uh, updates so far, I think it will settle in probably a few weeks. Um, like, people will start to understand what is the definitive best energy deck, and people will uh, really make... Like, right now, the decks are all over the place, which is really exciting. But that also means that, like, the ranked ladder is just moving a lot, because people are... A lot of, like, high rank players are losing to low rank players, because neither of them really knows what they can do with their decks yet. But as those things start to settle, um, things should uh, go back to normal in the like deck building and stuff. But uh, now we have things like that map to look forward to and campaign mode and all that stuff. So I think that even though the meta will slowly start to settle and become a little less exciting than it is now, we still have a lot of things to look forward to as Scrolls players. Yeah, I, right. I, think, I think there, and I actually think there's going to be more variety potentially. Or at least like even in the last patch there was some there were some differences between people's decks in the top thirty. Yeah. Some people running uh yeah, I mean there's plenty of examples you can think of whether it's the Crimson Geddon versus not Crimson Geddon or whatever else. But I have a lot of hope that this is going to create some variety options. Sorry I, that's I, it. I, I totally cut you off. <laughs> I I agree. Uh, with you uh, all, except for uh, order. I think order will be very streamlined because they are very limited in what is actually working. But uh, beside that, yeah, it, it will be quite some varied things we will face on the ladder. All right, then, well, that just about sums up our podcast for today. I want to plug our own stream, which you're watching right now, which is the Badger Guild. Please click the follow button so you can. Uh, watch all of our streams. I mean, just about everyone on uh, the Badger Guild really streams, but we now even have a scheduled streaming, which I think NRP, Cantor, uh, Dryad mostly. I'm on there too, I actually. Oh, For the first right. time, I'll be streaming on Monday through the Badger Guild right. streams. Look forward to that. Clever streaming. And you also have your own uh, Twitch channel, Clever. You want to plug yourself? Yep, <laughs> yep that's twitch.tv slash cleverus. I'll uh, put it in chat. There you go. Plug, plug successfully plugged. Right, NRP, you want to plug yourself as well? Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I don't really stream that much on Twitch at the moment, uh, but you can find uh, almost daily scrolls videos on my YouTube channel, which is just uh, YouTube.com/nrpTheNinja. So, I like to play a lot of Judgment, Ranked, and just random Scrolls videos on there. So, if you're looking for some Scrolls to watch, then there's always that. 
All right, and you can find the stream on the Heart of Scrolls YouTube channel, which is called the Heart of Scrolls. So you can catch up on past broadcasts if you haven't watched them, or link it to your friends to see current ones. I also want to uh, remind you all about the Dragon Brawl tomorrow, which is the big guild tournament going on between all the big guilds in the game. If you are a member of the guild, remember to enter. If not, there's probably going to be someone streaming. I'm not sure if anyone from us is going to be streaming. Uh, actually, tomorrow for the Owl stream, I'll be hosting the Owl stream with somebody else that I don't know yet. But we we think we're gonna. I think I'm gonna do. We're gonna do like spectating and like discussing of the Bragg and Brawl. So, all right, the Owl stream will probably be that. So you can go check that out. Cool. So you can check out the Owl stream and the Bragg and Brawl at the same time. We also have ESL on Sunday. That's the playoffs, right? This time. Yes. Big playoffs yep. for the Winter Cup. Yep, it's gonna be huge. Who's competing? I can't be remember. Very energy. Top of my head. <laughs> I I made it in, but sadly I cannot play on Sunday. So let's hope. I'm hoping uh, some other the, our Badgers can win. I know Magpie Man is in it. Evil Ice is in it. Um, I think Blinky might be in it because I'm I'm dropping out because I can't play on Sunday. So and he's reserve, I think. Mm. But I'm not sure about the other people, so you can. I think there's a link somewhere. I'll try to find it. All right, then. Are we gonna like put it in and go, like Badgers on three? Is that what we're? Is this a, can we do like a huddle to end the podcast? <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> we? Badgers on three. One, two, three. Go Badgers! <laughs> I was pretty excited. Yeah. That's what we'll have to do. If, that. We'll do that before really the uh, Dragon Brawl tomorrow. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, guests. Also, you guys. Dove Lord, thank you for being here. You're a beautiful human being. <laughs> so clever. Especially with this, uh, especially with this Skype. Yeah, you're you're all nice. Clever, thank you for being here. Great. NRP, thank you for being here. All guests and contributing to the amazing discussions we have had here today. And uh, thank you, Ice Cream, for dealing with the technical stuff. You doing a good job as always and we all love you as much as yep. we love our own mothers it's crazy so and thank you to all of our listeners to both on Twitch and on YouTube you know we love you all as well it's just a lot of love today so that about sums up our podcast go play scrolls and have fun and spread love goodbye farewell we'll bye badges on three <laughs> <laughs> badges on three